Why are we all around the world getting upset with each other? Isn't it true that we are going through a massive consciousness awakening? Why do we see violence in the news and around us? Because people attacking each other from with guns and with words. Are we supposed to be in a spiritual awakening? My contention is that we indeed are in a spiritual awakening. We all are getting clearer and clearer about what we value and what is worth defending. Because of that, it is becoming clearer that this person disagrees with this other person. You must have seen it in your life. It looks like everybody's in a personal attack against you, at work, at home. You see, I have recently been in Mexico. And in Mexico, like I think any other country in the world, there is a way of seeing things and one exactly the opposite. In politics, many of my friends are in one stream of the political spectrum. I don't live there. I was born there. I love the country, but I haven't been there living for more than 20 years. So I honestly can say I do not understand. And I didn't understand at all because my friends were telling me just about this side of reality. And I thought, well, you know, this is the way it is. And that was until another friend of mine told me about the other side of reality. And she explained to me why all my other friends were wrong. And all the arguments about the opposite. It was so revealing, not politically, but spiritually. These two groups of people love their country, love peace, love well-being, love the history of their country, love progress, love to take Poor, uh, uh, the poor out of poverty, love to create beautiful things. It's just they disagree on the how. And as I came back, I met uh, all my uh, clients, my coaching clients, and they were talking about very similar things. At work, having arguments about how to do things, at home having arguments of how to do things, exactly the same concept. We all humans totally agree that we want to be more spiritual, we want to be more loving, we all agree that we like beautiful things, happy children, but we are arguing on the how. We are arguing on the application, on the translation from of our dreams to reality. You know what is so calming of this realization? Is that you and me and everybody else do not need to fight. Socrates was right. Everybody is fighting some kind of battle. Therefore, we need to be kind. So how to deal with that coworker who shouts at you, with your husband who is totally stressed and doesn't understand what you're up to, with that person who thinks completely different to you in the political arena? What to do with all of them? Even with yourself, when you are in doubt and you think, oh, maybe it's this or maybe it's that, what am I going to do? In which way am I going to decide? In which way I can be peace in place of living at war, spiritual war, family war, business war, or let alone real one. 
of course, you will have the sea of compassion. The sea of compassion. Remember, Socrates, they are fighting a battle that I don't really understand. Because all wars start with an inner war. The division between contradictory desires. How can we heal that? How this, you know, this brings me the memory of uh, a beautiful Aztec word that is not a word, it's two. You know, the Aztecs didn't have a word for problem didn't exist. There was no problem in the Aztec Empire. So the closest to us two words. Ome Jolot. Two hearts. When you have a problem, you have your heart divided in two. How can you integrate your heart? How can you end that inner war? You can end that inner war by listening, by asking questions, by being curious. Some people are so much at war within and are so convinced of what they see to be true that they cannot even realize that they are war at war within. When you are angry, when you are really convinced of something, you are at war within. When you are open, when you are curious, you are not at worth with it. Little children, babies, toddlers, before we socialize them, they, that's the example of real, true peace. So what's the methodology to follow to end all this? Is to be like children. The sea of children, the sea of compassion, the sea of curiosity. Mm. Be like a child. Be curious. Without judging, without prejudging, because this person goes to this pol for this political party or this person has this nationality or uh, follows this religion. Listen with curiosity, with compassion, with genuine childhood loving curiosity. What do you feel? What do you want? Why do you do what you do? Explain to me. Be curious. As we are curious and interested and open and loving for each other, for ourselves, for the others, things are going to start changing. People are going to start feeling your, your kindness and they're going to start exploring their own inner convictions. And maybe as the conversation goes, the convictions start morphing into curiosity. Curiosity for others' way, other ways of thinking. Because as when we are close and we're so convinced that what we're saying is the ultimate truth, of course, what we do is to defend that truth. But when we have a conversation and we see that our truth also has a space for the truth of others, we start opening the door to our oneness. We start opening the door towards peace. And you, you can be that catalyst that could generate peace. Started for peace in your heart, peace in your family, peace in the entire world. Childlike curiosity. That is your best weapon to be a leader of love, a catalyst for oneness, sending you much love. Let's go.